Hello and how are you? Welcome to this tutorial in which we are still handling calculus from what we did previously in the previous tutorial in which we began working on differentiation. And now in this particular mm -hmm. session, we shall now pick it up to be able to go a step further. You also know that it's what I term as elementary calculus. And having a teacher, Dave Joseph Adendi. So before we begin, let's have a quick word of prayer. Let's bow down in reverence as we ask God for this guidance. Father Lord in heaven, we invite your you to be able to guide us throughout this session as we learn of you, who is the greatest mathematician. Teach us, Lord, this particular time. Just may pray. Amen. Let's begin with specific objectives. We know that under differentiation, we should be able to know this by the end of the topic. We should be able to do the following. And I believe uh, uh, you will have them at hand. Now, because this particular tutorial, we're not basically going to directly handle what is required of us in class. I've just decided to upload each of those uh, objectives directly on your screen so that we may be able to directly go into what is required. So please go through them. In the next tutorial, I shall be able to go through them and explain what you have done and what you have so far yet to go. So from the previous tutorial, I believe there's something you can note from the objectives that you can be able to do. But in this particular tutorial, there's a different set of objectives that I'm learn, learning to be able to finish. Now, I believe uh, from the previous tutorial, there's a question that I posed to on you and I earning that I created for you to be able to learn in this the next tutorial that I promised you to have. That was one question that we are now to answer in this particular tutorial. Why do we have different uh, difference, differentiation notations in calculus? Now, you might be wondering, what are those different notations? We have one, for example, dy over dx. Now, don't be worried about this dot here. This dot is misplaced. It should not be there. It just came out because of that image of the dy over dx. We can have another one, for example, f prime x. Why do we have such? Or we have this other one, y dot y. Uh -huh. We have this other one that looks very queer. We are, going, we are to explain each and every of these as to why we have different of them. So that is our objective for this session. Now, in differential calculus, there is no single form of notation for differentiation. That's what I'm beginning from. There is no single way we can say now this is the actual way to be able to have differentiation. There is no single form, uh, single uniform notation for differentiation. Instead, several differ different notations for the de derivative of a function or variable have been proposed by different mathematicians. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, what does this one tell us? Depending with the specific mathematician that was able to come up with that particular notation, then that notation can have its existence. So there were different, uh, there were different mathematicians, each one of them having a different mode of, uh, or a different structure of noting his particular uh, his derivatives accordance to calculus or accordance to the way he sought it to be. You may say that it's kind of he designed that, that particular mathematician design. So we are going to look at different mathematicians who gave their different notations for differentiation. The usefulness of each notation varies with the context and it is sometimes advantageous to use more than one notation in a given context. So you find that there are basic methods that I shall be able to emphasize in this tutorial and others shall just be as a backup for you to be able to uh, know that they exist as you await for higher levels of learning and you shall be able to meet them there so that you may try working on them. It means that specific, uh, right now what people have done is they have used specific notation for specific purposes to be able to 
have them for two pur purposes. For example, a very common one is uh, differential equations. You may have, for example, partial differential equations or ordinary differential equations. So if you look at such, there should be a specific way that mathematicians have agreed to be able to denote those equations or the derivative of those equations. So if you look at that, you'll be able to find out that they have used a specific format. And that format is because of a specific mathematician. So that is what I'm basically de driving home. The most common notations for differentiation in brackets and if possible of operation, uh, that is basically the anti-differentiation uh, or indefinite integration. They are listed below. The, they b basically mean that they are listed in the next few slides. Now you can note them. Number one, we have Leibniz notation. Number two, we have Lagrange notation. We also have number three, Euler's notation. And then finally, we are going to look at Newton's notation. Four different uh, methods of notations that are used by mathematicians to be able to note differentiation. Let's begin with the first one. Leibniz notation is our first one. Now, the original notation employed by Gottfried Leibniz, who is there on your screen, is used throughout mathematics. It is particularly common when the equation y is equals to fx is regarded as a functional relationship between dependent and independent variables, uh, y and x. Now, let's be able to explain something. There's an introduction of something here that I've not yet explained. Y, uh, y is equals to fx. What does this bas basically mean? Now, I believe this one you know. If you have, you may have an equation in that format. Y is equals to x. For example, if I decide y is equals to x plus six, this is the, an equation. Now, in calculus, for example, we replace this by grammar. Let us now come uh, borrow from grammar people. Y is defined by the value of x and whatever is written as the constants of that equation. It means Y is dependent on x to be able to have its particular uh, to have its particular definition. It therefore means because Y is dependent on x, x. Uh, y is a function of uh, x. That's basically what it means. So if you have a function of x, that will be able to be y. So <coughs> this one gives us y. Everything is equals to y. So basically, x is the function of y. That's basically what we mean. Let me state it again. x is a function of y. So that's why we replace it by this particular term. The function of x, fx, is equals to x plus 6. That's what we mean, which is basically, again, equal to y. So I believe you can see how the relationship comes about. So we replace y with function of x. So y is a function of x, or x is a function of y, whatever it is. That's what we basically mean. So fx, function of x. y is a function of x. I believe that makes sense. So Leibniz notation makes this relationship explicit by writing the derivative as dy over dx. So if we differentiate uh, y um, with respect to x, we'll find out that this will be the way we shall be able to note according to Leibniz notation. Now, at your level, this is one of the uh, methods that you are to use in noting your uh, derivatives or basically when you're working out with calculus equations and you're differentiating. This is one of the acceptable methods and this dot is misplaced. It should not be there. So that's what you have. And if your equation is in the form of x is equals to y plus, for example, 8. This means that y is the independent variable. It means if you're differentiating, it shall not be dy over dx. It shall be dx over dy. Now, this thing is not a guesswork. 
it's a statement that we are writing. We are differentiating dx with respect to dy. dy is, uh, here y is the independent variable, but in this other previous equation, x was the independent variable. So we differentiate with respect to the independent variable. This one was placed in the previous tutorial. Please always note that. The function whose value at x is the derivative of f at x is therefore written as df over that. So if uh, we decide now, to, instead of writing y is equals to all that, if we decide to note it as f of x, we shall now differentiate and we shall not now use dy, we shall use df f, dfx. Believe we are noting something. This is also the similar to when we say dy all of dx. Y is a function of uh, y is a function of x. So if you differentiate, it shall have dy over dx. But if you decide to replace your y with f of x, function of x, you shall differentiate and have this dfx over dx. Or basically, if you want to be, if you simplify it further, you can have this or you can have that, whichever it is. That is basically what we have as Leibniz notation. Higher derivatives are written as that. So basically, we can differentiate a statement twice. So if you differentiate it twice, this gives you the second derivative. This is the third derivative, fourth derivative, and the nth derivative. So n here is basically an integer that shows us the position of your derivative for example here is at position four which is the fourth derivative position three third derivative second derivative at the second position n at the nth position it means n can be a positive integer greater than one now let me introduce the integral symbol now this is something that i now need to explain more further so be keen we are speaking about integration in his works which is stated there Analysis tetragonus taki par secunda methodi tangentium in Versailles ex exemplar. Now I'm not uh, a French to be able to uh, state this one clearly in the French or whatever. I just read it the way an African would read his statement, though from a different language. So that is the work that he did and introduced the integral symbol both from. 1675 that symbol is basically now what is used uh, is, the, is now as the standard symbol of integration and here we have the explanation so if you are integrating a function it shall be in this particular format now let me explain something here if I'm integrating a function your result shall be the integrated function which you call an integral plus a constant the integrated function plus a constant. Never forget that, please. So that's basically what we have. But whatever is coming after this, this one is not important for you at this particular level because we are speaking of double integrals here. At your level, you shall only speak of uh, an integral, single integral. But if you have double integrals, this one shall come later in your uh, course of learning. So that is basically an overview of integration. So let me give you a cut and razor. Let's speak about integration for a moment so that you may not be in the blues. If you have an equation y is equals to xn to integrate, we shall do it with respect to the independent variable, which shall be in the following format. Till it's in the format of if you have xn, you have just picked a uh, way of explaining a particular equation. This can be an equation, for example, x squared plus 6 or whatever equation that you have. I've uh, just narrowed down to x power n dx is equals to this. So if I'm integrating, what does this statement mean? I'm integrating the independent variable with respect to that independent variable. Believe you can notice here. I mean, integrating x with respect to x. Notice we said if we are in calculus, we integrate or differentiate with respect to the independent variable. That's something new to note. So here is the independent variable, or basically the whole equation format. Uh, that's what you'll have here. So when you when you're integrating, something you need to note 
the power increases by one and you divide it by that increment that increased power in differentiation you say that the power reduces and you uh, divide that particular value or that derivative by that particular reduced power for example if you had x squared if you are differentiating this you shall end up with 2x that's what we said but if you're integrating x squared you shall end up with x cubed divided by 3 because the power increased by 1 that goes to 3 and then divided by the new power 3 an example integrate y is equals to x cubed if you don't mind you can pause the video and then try working on that so that you're able to practice on this new concept I believe you have a solution somewhere. If you integrate that, you'll end up with x power 4 divided by 4 plus a constant. That's what we initially failed to know. So that must be included in your solution, is plus a constant. Next notation, Lagrange notation. One of the most common modes of notations for differentiation is due to Joseph Louis Lagrange, that is him. In Lagrange's notation, a prime mark denotes a derivative. So, if f is a function, of which I've tested from the previous notation, of how f comes out to be a function, then if derivative evaluated at x is written as f prime x, this mean basically means if I have an, an equation f of x, it means x is my independent variable. For example, x squared plus 1. If I integrate this, my integration shall be f prime x. I believe that is, quite, that is clear. Now, Lagrange first used the notation in unpublished works and it appears appeared in print in 1770. High derivatives are indicated using additional prime marks as in f double prime is basically the second derivative and f triple prime is basically the third derivative and so on and so forth. The use of repeated ma prime marks eventually becomes unwieldy, unwieldy. Some authors continue by employing Roman numerals, especially in lower case. We basically mean, for example, if I have my fourth integral, it shall be in this particular format, fifth integral here, sixth integral like that. But others, to denote fourth, fifth, sixth, and higher order derivatives, other authors use Arabic numerals in parentheses as in this. Believe it or not that, they must be in parentheses, number one. And number two, uh, is also the position you have to note which position you're speaking about. This notation also makes it possible to describe the nth derivative where n is a variable. This is written in the form f n in bracket x. Very, very important. When taking the antiderivative, we basically mean integration, antiderivative integration. Lagrange followed Leibniz's notation of which we shall use this particular integral sign. So if you integrate, you'll have this being your uh, equation, being your integral, sorry. And if this being your integral, notice that this was basically equal to y. So my y here will have a prime. So that's what was just missing here. However, because integration is the inverse of differentiation, Lagrange notation for higher order derivative extends to integrals as well. Now, for him, he added this. Repeated integrals for f may be written as follows in this format. Now, I would like you to suggest, just in your own words, before I tell you what they mean, what might these integrals be standing for, or what positions might they be standing for? Is it first integral, second integral, third interval, whatever it is, that's what I simply ask for. Now, I suppose you have some particular values at hand. 
that basically for the fast integral. This is easily confused by this. Please, this is an inverse function. This is not derivative, um, an integral. The integral is here written in parentheses or basically in brackets. That I believe you got second integral, third integral, and then the nth integral. Third notation, Euler's notation. Leonard Euler, of whom you see on the screen, notation uses a dif uh, differential operator suggested by Louis Francois Antoine Ab Abogast, noted as D, of which we have a, the D operator, or we have that D with the waves, of which it was between Newton and uh, Lebni, Lib uh, Lib of which the term it as Newton Lebni's operator. When applied to a function, fx is defined by this. Now, notice the difference. If you are noticing that they are they're different in their own ways. Each particular mathematician had his own way of defining them. So it's basically equal to what Leibniz had in mind. They are, all of them are the same. They are, we're si simply speaking of derivatives, but different ways of not, uh, noting them. But by the way, something you need to note is that in your course of work, you are required to note your uh, your differentiation by using either Leibniz notation or Lagrange notation. I've rarely seen Euler's notation and even Newton's notation in uh, high school level. So in higher learning is whereby you shall now start applying Euler's notation and also Newton's notation. But it's good to know them. Now, higher derivatives are noted as powers of d, as in this. Now, what do you suggest this might mean? This, I believe you know, it's the basically the first derivative, the second derivative, sorry. And that is the third derivative, and that is the nth derivative. Now, let me explain something. You may find others writing here x. You may find others writing here x, or basically a particular variable that is independent. It basically stands for that independent variable or the val or the variable that which you are dif uh, differentiating with respect to. For example, we differentiate with respect to x because x is an independent variable. It doesn't require to be redefined. So most cases you'll find that it is d squared and then the x here is a subscript. It doesn't have a problem. That is basically what happens. But if you also leave it blank, nobody will penalize you also. But it's good to be neat and well explanatory without further ado. Now let's look at Euler's notation for integration, which is basically similar to what we have seen later before. Euler's notation can be used for integration in the same way that Lagrange's notation is as follows you can have them like that now here is the difference the difference is here there is no that particular parenthesis so that is only where the difference comes from first integral second integral third integral which is basically my nth integral let's find the final notation newton's notation Isaac Newton notation for differentiation also called the dot notation for differentiation places a dot over the dependent variable. Please, please, please notice the play of words. Here you place the dot over the dependent variable. For example, if your equation is with respect to uh, uh, y is the subject and that is the unknown that you have, y is equals to x squared plus 3, for example y is that particular unknown variable or is basically the dependent variable so if you're differentiating it will be y dot this so basically that is if y is a function of t y is a function of t it means you have an equation like this y is equals to t squared plus t that's y is a function of t 
Then the derivative of y with respect to t is this. If you differentiate that, you'll have this. Higher derivatives are represented using multiple dot, as in, if you have two dot, second derivative, three dot, third derivative, four dot, fourth derivative, ten dot, tenth derivative. Newton extended this area quite far. Now let's find the grammatical explanation of everything. Two dot is the second derivative. You can notice it here from uh, Leibniz notation. You can also notice here from uh, who? Euler's notation, you can also notice here from uh, Lagrange's notation. 3 dot, 4 dot, 5 dot, 6 dot, up to the nth dot. And something you need to note is what I was explaining earlier. Here we have y with respect to t. So if you can notice this, y is the function of t. You can notice that this is slightly different of what I was explaining. So there's that t written down here. So always remember that and also the different notations of everyone. This one is also a summary of all the notations that you have learned up to this particular stage. So N Newton's notation for integration is simply the same way. Newton developed many different notations for integration in his Quadratura Cavarum in 1704 and later works. He wrote a small vertical bar or prime above the, in the dependent variable which, for example, can be y or also x, depending if what is the independent, va dependent variable, a prefixing rectangle, which is basically what I've written here, or the enclosure of the term in a rectangle, uh, where we have y, to denote the fluent or time integral. So, for example, this is what we have. But something I need to also give you, uh, to tell you is that, basically, Integration is universal. We use that sign. These others, you shall use them in different levels of learning. So don't be worried about this. This is just for your own knowledge. And all to is just for your basic knowledge. In summary, in a nutshell, let's look at the notation types that we have looked at. Def uh, derivative notations and final integration. First, we have the Gottfried Leibniz notation of which we have said is dn over dy over dx dn, of which we have said n is a positive integer. Okay, not necessarily positive or negative, uh, but for your case, most of the time, n will be positive. Joseph Louis Lagrange, we have said is n f prime n x. Third notation, led Leonard Euler's, which is that. Finally, Newton that integration is universal for all of them this is for two equations this is first whereby we have y being the subject of the equation with which means y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable this is a different one also so in this case if you find this it means your equation reads like this for example y is equals to x power n and in this other case you shall have x being the dependent variable is equals to y power n. So that is how you shall have the two. Otherwise, you are required to know these two plus both of these. These other ones are not necessary, but I just brought them up so that you're able to understand that there are different notations of noting dif der derivatives. Otherwise, keep on practicing so that you're able to note everything here and even grow in your particular field in mathematics. Success in your preparations and may God bless you abundantly.